On slide six, we have um, a link to the routine numberless word problems. And I used the same problem that they did in this video. So if you want to see it in a face-to-face -face class, here's the link. If you're going to use this um, recording for your professional development, you can even have teachers compare and contrast the face-to-face -face classroom and the online. On slide seven, I have, you know, not a hard, fast protocol, but the protocol that I'm choosing to use today. Um, so in numberless word problems, I'm going to start off with a color coding um, and asking you, you know, what questions could be asked. I'll have you share your questions in pair shares. Um, we'll get new information through a text box. And then um, the idea of like, why are all these possible? So this is the protocol I'm gonna use and let's give it a whirl. Alrighty, join me down on slide eight. Let's take that part out, there we go. On slide eight, if you could please take over one of those text boxes. Instead of the word student, it'd be lovely to have your name in there. And that's gonna be your space, more like your carpet spot or the dot in line. And I would typically have this done for my students if I had a class roster. Alrighty. So the, uh, on slide eight, this is your space. And we're going to start off with this, um, these two sentences. Isaac found some seashells at the beach. Isaac found more seashells than Kira. I'm going to ask you, um, a, uh, at this point, what questions could be asked? So given this, what kinds of questions could we ask? If you have one idea, you're going to start at the top of the rainbow and color code red. If you have two questions that you could ask about this numberless word problem, you're going to change it to orange. If you think of three mathy questions you could ask, you're going to change it to yellow. And we're going to keep moving through the rainbow. As you have more questions you could ask, you can change it to another color. And these colors let me know right away how many ideas people have. I'm going to pop you in breakout rooms. You're going to be with exactly one other person. Um, so these are just a quick pair share. And it's only going to be for two minutes. You're going to share all the questions you think you could ask about this problem. During this time, if you find that your partner is disconnected or is not interacting, um, you have the ability to move yourself into another breakout room. So please don't be um, all alone. All right, turn on your microphones and share the questions you could ask now. If you are watching this remotely, um, there are some things that I am doing right now. I'm ensuring that the microphone is on for each pair. And if I see that it's not, I'm going to assume that that person is by themselves and I'm gonna regroup them with other people. Um, 
and I also am noticing new people who come in and I want to get them into a group. Hi Branch, do you remember who you were working with when you were last in here? I'm going to put you in group one just so you have some buddies. And I also typically spend time moving in and out of these rooms and listening in on them. I'm just going to see if they would like to share. No, it's just us. It's <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> Look at that picture. No. Just kind of really cool picture. <laughs> My daughter was face painting. I had to put it up here. <laughs> that That's is so funny. cool. I love how your daughters are so creative, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back everyone to the main room. We are all back together now. Hello, hello and welcome back. And now, um, you know, typically in a class, I might have students raise their hands and we can share that way. Um, and, you know, there's different ways we could share it. What I would like to know um, is on the next slide. So if you find that your question is kind of answered here, uh, feel free to put in the chat box a little emoji connection. Alrighty, I'm on slide nine. I invite you down here. And our new piece of information is on here. It says, Isaac found 20 seashells at the beach. Isaac found more seashells than Kira. How many seashells could Kira have? If you would take over one of those little text boxes and put a number in there. And then if you see another number that you agree with, you are welcome to turn that number bold and bold will be our signal that we made a connection with somebody else and we agree with that. You'll also notice in the little corner there, I have a thinking emoji. He's off of the slide, just off to the side. And if there's one that you're like, hmm, I disagree with, or I'm not sure, or I need an explanation, feel free to um, drag that emoji down um, to any of the ones that you might feel that way. And we'll start off with this bold one. Uh, somebody put this here. If this is your 15, I invite you to turn on your microphone and tell us uh, why this is a possible answer. Pretty sure that was my 15. Um, I just knew it was less than um, what Isaac had with 20. And now that I think about it, I mean, it was. it seemed kind of random, but now I see that they're both groups of five. So I wonder if that kind of like, I naturally thought of like one less group of five. That was my 15. Neat. Um, and some people put one in bold also. If this is your green uh, piece here, would you like to share with us? Why do you think one could be a possible answer? I know that one is less than 20, so that could be the number of seashells that Kira has because that would meet the conditions and the problem of Isaac finding more than Kira. Oh. And you know, we even have some that say or less, or they are a range. If you were one of the people who have it in yellow, I invite you to turn on your microphone and share with us what this what does this mean and, and why isn't it just one number? This is uh, Jerry. 
Um, I was just thinking of the range of possible numbers. And so, what does range mean to you? Um, the maximum amount of seashells down to the minimum amount of seashells. Uh, and, you know, we can get into some really neat number sense here. We can talk about the number one being the lowest and have a rationale for that. We can talk about the number zero. We could even get into negative numbers and would they exist in this problem. So for those of you who are teaching number sets, especially in that um, middle school range, this becomes an important topic. All right, folks, so this is just the numberless word problems in a bit of a more structure. Um, and uh, on slide uh, seven, I have the um, different structures that I used here. Uh, hopefully you will find that by mixing and maxing, uh, mixing and matching structures in different routines, kids will find that they're um, different, fun, and interactive. All right, so let's get into our task.